I have a thing for story structure. I really do. When I'm watching a movie or reading a book and the structure pivots, bam, at exactly the right place, I break out in goosebumps. Why? Why are you like that, you might be asking yourself. Well, I think it has something to do with the way I was brought up. See, I grew up at the very center of the explosion in ch children's television in the 1980s. My mom, Jerry Laybourne, invented Nickelodeon, along with a lot of other wildly talented people, of course, one of whom was my dad, Kit Laybourne. My dad was an animator and a TV producer, and my mom became the president of Nickelodeon. And because Nick was a new network, and because maybe they didn't have all the funding in the world, we developed and made a lot of the programming in our own house. For example, we tested all of the stunts for Double Dare in our basement. <laughs> yes, it was awesome. At the dinner table, we were talking about premise and character and plot, and it it, having this experience turned both my brother and I into storytellers. Sam is a Hollywood showrunner, and I am a young adult novelist. It gave us something else as well, a different way of looking at television. We weren't watching as consumers, we were watching as creatives. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to propose to you that we need to give our kids the tools to view media not as consumers, not even as critics, but as creatives. Or, as I like to say, digital natives must be creatives. Nowadays, most kids have everything they need to create content in their back pocket. If they've got a smartphone, they can shoot and edit a video, they can, they can do a soundtrack, they can probably do CGI. But most kids really aren't doing that. I think most kids are using their devices to consume more content. Now, you've probably heard the stats so many times that you've tuned them out. But let me just refresh your memory. Our kids have a part-time job. Four hours a day, 28 hours a week, they are watching TV. That's not, to, that's not online time. That's screen time is purely TV and film. That's not counting gaming, or texting, or social media, or browsing. That's just TV and film. Now, traditionally, the wisdom has been that teaching our kids to engage as critics can empower them as viewers. And we certainly have a rich history of meaningful and deep criticism and critical review in our country. My novels have been savaged by some very intelligent teenagers. <laughs> but mostly, I think, that criticism has gotten a little bit careless. Because we do it all the time. It's a click away. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Five stars, one star. Two and a half stars. It feels like that's the level of nuance to our criticism. Two and a half stars. So as I see it, there are three ways to watch TV, as a consumer, as a critic, and as a creative. And if I was to physicalize these, here's what it would look like, okay? Here's the consumer, right? Big hated expression. They're limp. They're actually very much like a sponge. They're absorbent. They're malleable, right? Here's the critic. The critic's like, saying, dazzle me, like, bring it on. And there's really nothing in the world less attractive than a seven-year-old saying, dazzle me. <laughs> now, here's the creative, as I see them. They're watching. They're watching to see what's happening because they're thinking about how they could make it better, frankly. They're, the, the eyes are bright. They're on the tips of their toes. So I spend most of my time writing, of course, as a novelist. 
But occasionally, I get invited to go to schools and talk to the students, and I love it when this happens, because I bring with me my secret agenda to try to turn the digital natives into creatives. Mostly, they would be happy, the kids, just to ask me questions like, where do you get your ideas? And is it hard to be a writer? And my all-time favorite question I was ever asked, do you make more or less than $1 million a year? <laughs> less. <laughs> a lot less. I go in and I talk about what else? Story structure. I have an exercise I do with the kids. And uh, as I do it, I see the lights come on for them. Because, you know, the language of story is something that we're all so fluent in that we forget it has a syntax. But to these kids, that's new information. So I love this exercise so much, I thought I would do it with you. What you need before we do it is a tool, a simple diagnostic tool that you know so well, it is a part of your very being. Here it is, beginning, middle, end. We know this pattern because it's in our everyday lives. We wake up, we go to work, we go to sleep. We make a meal, we eat it, we do the dishes. We have a dream, we work hard, we achieve it. Friends, we're born, we live, and we die. Beginning, middle, end. With this tool at the ready, I show the kids clips from YouTube and America's Funniest Home Videos, and together we diagnose the story problems and we brainstorm solutions. So let's do that now. Ken, in one of your emails, you said your wife questioned whether the video that I had published was real or whether the thing had been faked. Yesterday, we had the house pressure washed, and I had to move all the feeders off the deck. So I put them up on this temporary rack in the backyard, and I'm just making a second video for you and your wife. You can judge for yourself. I'm just going to stand here quietly for a minute. Get here, so we're going to kill this now. Hope you enjoy it. See you. <laughs> so I love this guy. He's a very serious person, and I like serious people. His name is Chuck Murphy, and basically he's got a chip on his shoulder. He, he put up a video of hummingbirds, and his friend was like, I don't really believe you have that many hummingbirds. So he's like, oh, oh yeah, you don't believe it? Watch. And truly, it is a lot of hummingbirds. <laughs> but just when it gets exciting, when our story sense is like, oh my god, We've got, a, we've got a beginning, now we're in the middle, now what's gonna happen? He cuts the tape. So when I go to schools, I ask the kids, uh, what happens next? And unless they're of a certain age, the hands shoot up. If they're of a certain age, it's like, uh, you know, like this. But, but if they're younger than that, everybody, so everybody wants to tell me, and so somebody will say, um, maybe a hummingbird would fly in his ear. Or somebody says, maybe um, a hummingbird will be flying by and he'll catch it and crush it, and then he'll start crying. Or they'll say, maybe the hummingbirds will descend on him and they will, they will pierce his skin with their little hummingbird beaks and they'll like drill into him everywhere and then he'll be like a fountain, like a sprinkler of blood. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, totally. That can be your story. You know, they're getting it. Uh, here's another clip. This one is an example of a story that's all middle. <laughs> so 
when I show this in schools, I ask the kids, we have to come up with a setup for this. So how did we get here? We have a baby laughing her head off. We have a dad laughing behind the camera. We have a dog doing something in the foreground. And the kids have to come up with the, with the setup for this story. And I have to tell you that I cut this thing way down. It goes on for two minutes. It's just this baby laughing and laughing, and nothing ever happens. <laughs> and I mean, it's delightful, but it really makes your, it gets your story sense on fire because you're like, first of all, you're like, is the baby going to throw up? Is the baby going to fall over? You know, what's going to happen? But you want, you have this natural urge to see the end of the story. All right, this next clip I love. You have to know beforehand that this little in the clip, um, we're talking about his babysitter, Paige. She's the woman in question. It's his babysitter. Chase, guess who sent me a text message today? Huh? Paige. My kid come over? Guess what? She's getting married to Jalen. No. <laughs> Why are you sad? You don't want her to get married? Why? It's going to hurt your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I love this little kid so much. Oh my God, he's so precious. And we know why this has no end, right? Because the mom put down the camera and went and gave him a hug. <laughs> But I love showing this in the schools because it has so many rich story questions in it, right? Who is this Paige? What is so special about Paige? And how far is he willing to go to break up the engagement? <laughs> now, at this point, uh, when I'm speaking in a school, I like to give the kids three perfect clips with a beginning, middle, and end. So that's what we're going to do. Hi. Will you marry me? Talk loud. A kiss. Will you marry me? No, you have to kiss. Yes. No. No, no and then we kiss. If I do. No. On the cheek. No, on the lips. No. <laughs> That's what I said. No. 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 <laughs> we did not tell them to do that. <laughs> I love it. There's this double helix in there, right? There's this play within a play. There's the beginning, middle, end of the little play that they're making the cousins do. And then there's the bigger, much bigger, better story of these older cousins making the little cousins do a play in which they kiss and then getting perfectly busted. I mean, if you, the, the cinematography of that clip is just fantastic. <laughs> when she appears between the gap. And her response is such a great parenting thing. She just watches and then she just walks away. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Ooh, it didn't break. There we go. It's so loose though. It's not tight enough. That is a mess. <laughs> Look how good we. Let's go with it, you see. <laughs> oh my goodness. Isn't that great? <clears throat> he's such a sweet dad. You kind of get the feeling like this is the first time he's been left in charge. And he's going to do a hairdo. And he's being so kind and delicate. His voice is so soft. And we don't really know what the story is we're watching, but we find out it's the story of a hairdo. Beginning, middle, pop. Here's an example of how fast this all can happen. <laughs> Beginning, a guy's going to throw a stick for his dogs. Middle. He throws it, and the dogs, for inexplicable reasons, run away from the water. There are a lot of tools that we can use to teach our kids to view media creatively, and we should use them. But I just have to say, if it's a 600-page novel, or a two-hour movie, or a 30-second YouTube clip, or a six-second Vine, 
beginning, middle, end works. <clears throat> Our kids are living in a media maelstrom. There is content coming at them from the big screen to the small screen, from the desktop to the laptop to the gaming console to the palm of their hand. I believe we need to give them the tools to engage with it creatively or they're going to drown. Digital natives must be creatives, if for no other reason, for the sake of their posture. Do we want them here or here? or here. Thank you. Thank you.